um, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, it's great to, to see lots of people interested in this, in this uh, change. Um, it's, um, it's a biggie. I think this is the reality of, um, of, of how the LRT is going to affect us for a short time for that long-term goal of having it complete. So hopefully short-term pain. So I appreciate it very, very much. And uh, I'm Teresa Cavanaugh. I think you know who I am, a city councillor. And I'm gonna pass it over to Damon Berlin who will introduce the team. Thank you very much, councillor. And thank you very much, everybody who joined us. And I mean, even all of us shoveling and not shoveling. Um, I'm sure we all got a taste of that today, whether we're doing it now or not. Um, my name is Damon Berlin. I do stakeholder relations for the stage two uh, construction of the light rail transit in the city of Ottawa. Uh, I've been working on this project for a lot of years and, uh, and I've got to know some of you and I'm sure I'll get to know most of you uh, by the time this is all over. Uh, but tonight we're here to talk about um, the upcoming impacts to the 417 on and off ramps as they relate to the stage two project. From the city side, I have Rosanna Baggs and Campbell Inwood. Rosanna Baggs has uh, been an amazing addition to the team and she bridges communications and uh, engineering in, in a way that was greatly needed and has been a great support for Ward 7. And Campbell Inwood is our uh, director or manager of, uh, of transportation and, and manages all of, uh, all of the temporary detours and, and all the good stuff that you love to hate during a construction project. On uh, Kev's side, I have Jamie Robinson, who has been with our project for, for uh, uh, almost a year now, or coming up in six months maybe, and, uh, or it just feels like that long. <laughs> but he's been a great addition to the project and, and brought in uh, some, some experience and leadership to the stakeholder relations team that uh, has just brought it to a, a whole new wonderful level. Uh, and with him tonight is Andre Marc uh, Alain, who uh, who's recently joined the team actually and comes to us from the federal government, and uh, and Jen Falconer, who uh, deputy director of communications and stakeholder relations. So uh, thank you to uh, to Jamie and team and to city team. Tonight it's going to be Jamie who's giving the presentation. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to him. And when we get into Q and A then uh, I want you to feel comfortable asking any questions and then uh, it'll be for us, the city and Kev to, to help answer those questions. Uh, so thank you very much for coming and Jamie, over to you. Uh, you're gonna do a great job. Great, Damon, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much and Councillor, uh, thank you for, uh, uh, for hosting this meeting and uh, uh, for all of the, the neighbors online, it's uh, fantastic that you're taking time out to join us this evening. Um, obviously, as uh, folks have uh, spoken about the weather, but uh, uh, and the impacts, and it's uh, great that so many people can come out when they're uh, uh, when the weather's so poor. But I always sort of look at it from the other perspective. It's uh, a great job on the councillor and their team picking this particular date. It's right between the Battle of Ontario last night and Battle of Ontario tomorrow night. Because if it was uh, if the Leafs were playing the Senators uh, tonight, uh, I can guarantee you. Then at about uh, 25 minutes, when I'm about uh, right through my presentation, that uh, uh, all of a sudden that the size of the crowd would probably be uh, 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 shrinking like crazy. But tremendous outcome last night, and uh, let's hope for uh, a couple of more. Uh, Wednesday to Thursday. You can hardly tell that I'm a Toronto guy, uh, but I just, I cannot stand the Leafs. So um, uh, that's my perspective on there and my introduction. So I'm going to share my screen with folks. Um, there we go. Can people see what I've got on the screen? Yeah. All good. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Let me just open that up just a little bit more for folks. There we go. Um, so as, as uh, the introduction is and, and, uh, and the notice that uh, have gone to folks were, um, uh, this is a tremendously um, um, impactful project. Um, at the end of the day, there's gonna be a fantastic uh, uh, addition, uh, both east and west to uh, the, um, the O-Train um, LRT line in, in Ottawa. 
but uh, there's a bit of pain to get to uh, to get to that point. And uh, uh, people are always surprised that uh, when um, when we're building a light rail transit line, that uh, in fact there's uh, on this particular project with the east and west extensions that there's uh, a lot of roadway work too, and there's a lot of impacts on roads. So if people are driving out in the um, in the east. Um, they, they see that uh, where um, uh, where the east extension goes is in the in the median of uh, uh, Highway 174. So uh, we've had to build a series of uh, we've got to widen the uh, widen the uh, median to create the space for the guideway uh, in order to uh, run the tracks down that. Um, but in the west, it uh, similarly we um, uh, we touch upon the. Uh, uh, some uh, some interchanges at Pinecrest uh, Road, Holly Acres Road, and Moody Drive, and uh, we're here to talk about uh, that work and uh, the impacts that it's um, uh, that our construction is going to ha have on those interchanges, and how we're going to uh, get people moving around uh, as best we can during the course of that um, uh, during the course of that construction. So let me tell you sort of off the bat the kind of work that's taking place. It is, um, uh, as I said, uh, it involves some significant infrastructure works at, uh, at these three major interchanges. And then uh, I'll be really focusing my um, uh, talk tonight really on what's taking place at Pinecrest uh, Road and Moody, Moody Drive. Holly Acres Road is uh, is is uh, we're doing work there, but uh, we don't have any long-term ramp ramp closures at um, at uh, Holly Acres Road, so um, it's not as as impactful uh, uh, work that takes place there um, at uh, at Holly Acres. So we're working. Uh, so as as Damon introduced, um, uh, we're, I'm with uh, the the consortia, uh, Kiwit Eurovia Vinci, that said uh, that's building the uh, the project on behalf of the City of Ottawa. We work really closely, of course, with our, our colleagues, and you you uh, interview both the councillor, the elected officials, and the, and the and the uh, stakeholder and, and traffic folks like uh, uh, Damon or Rosanna and Campbell <clears throat> to really uh, uh, to build this project. So, and uh, we um, we do we as part of the project we do the design and we propose uh, ways to uh, to get the project built. But ultimately, uh, the city had in, in in particular as it relates to traffic and other uh, other issues, they they have to um, uh, weigh in and and and. and and make sure that it makes sense to them before we can proceed to do it. Um, uh, have indicated uh, that really why we're here is that the, the construction activities that we're about to embark upon is uh, as early as March um, involves some significant ramp closures um, uh, that begin in March and uh, various ramps will be closed for various lengths of time um, over the course of the next uh, uh, couple of years. So why do ramps need to be closed? <clears throat> so. Um, just to orient, uh, orient folks uh, as well, they, so um, folks are familiar with the fact that the LRT guideway, um, hopefully you are, um, that it runs uh, along the existing transitway uh, corridor um, at grade, so at, at level, uh, parallel to the north side of Highway 417. Um, one of the going in uh, uh, criteria for this project um, uh, established by the city some time ago is that in order to ensure public safety, um, there there can't be any level crossings, or it can't be at any at grade crossings. In other words, you 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 don't want uh, uh, trains running over, uh, traveling over uh, train tracks, running over streets, and uh, so and and potentially getting in the impact of uh, of vehicles. And so uh, that decision was was uh, was made that there'll be uh, there's no at grade crossings. Um, and um, for the entire stage two project. The other thing that I always uh, remind people about too is that is important for the safety issue. It's just as important when the train is up and running that uh, uh, to ensure the speed and reliability of the, of the, of the trains for the, for the transit users is again, you don't want any um, at grade crossings as well. So you can continue on and don't have to worry about uh, stoplights and crossing uh, uh, roads and lanes of traffic. So um, uh, that's that's why we the ramp. So that's that's uh, sort of oriented people to where we're at. So the guideway itself runs in a trench. Um, so it's it's not a um, uh, it's not a tunnel, but it's a what we call a trench, and uh, it runs underneath uh, Pinecrest uh, Pinecrest Road and Moody Drive, and it runs on a bridge over Holly Holly Acres Road. But uh, as you can imagine, we're, 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 uh, when we go from, um, if you orient yourself from uh, Pinecrest on the east, heading over to Moody on the west, 
if we're running a, a parallel to the Highway 417, we're crossing a series of ramps. And so we, um, uh, the ramps that, are, that exist currently um, have to be adjusted, they have to be shifted, some have to be temporarily closed and, and, and others rebuilt to con accommodate the construction activities and ultimately the, the guideway that we're, uh, that we're building. So in terms of impacts and, um, and, uh, and mitigation, so um, traffic is gonna have to be shifted during construction to make uh, space for the new structures and, that, we're, uh, that we're building. Those structures include um, uh, stations and bridges and roads and the LRT guideway itself. Guideway again is, is, um, is where you've got the, uh, the tracks and the, the continuary system overhead that powers the, um, the light rail vehicles. All of this work is done in stages and um, uh, we use temporary ramps, uh, uh, temporary closures and, and shifting traffic patterns to, to make this happen. Um, we want to make sure that construction is scheduled so that the duration and extent of the impacts on all modes of transportation in the local community is minimized. So it's not uh, we working with the city, we don't just um, take the interest of motorists in mind, it's the uh, interest of the, the, the local community, it's the motorists uh, who are using the, uh, the ramps, it's the transit users who are on the transit way, it's the um, active uh, transportation folks who are walking and, uh, and biking, uh, it's, it's, it's all modes of transportation, it's everyone taking into consideration as we, as we, um, as we uh, implement these, uh, these closures. Um, one of the important things to, to remind, and, and uh, I know if I don't uh, hit on it, Campbell will sort of hit it over the head to, uh, and out of the park for sure, is, um, is that we, we implement, we, how our traffic designers at KEV, we, we take a look at uh, the work that has to be done and we, and we propose um, uh, solutions to, to the work that to the city reviews and approves before they get implemented. We know that once the, we um, uh, we do that and the and the traffic has, has been um, shifted or their detours have been implemented, we know that it takes about a couple of weeks for people to make adjustments, um, and uh, it's just a, a natural course. And so, what uh, people get really focused on their routines, using the same routes, the same ramps, the same uh, streets every day, and uh, and so um, we know that uh, if all all of a sudden we're going to close something despite the best efforts to let people know it takes a little bit a couple of weeks before people adjust to the patterns and um, and, uh, and and adopt accordingly so um, uh, we we implement things and we will implement things based on what we're talking about here tonight but uh, the city and kev will will review uh, traffic and where that traffic is going and uh, do adjustments have to be made and uh, and based on that adjustments will be made as as, as necessary the detours that I'm going to be discussing are going to be, uh, uh, they're going to use our, our approved arterial and major collector roads, and they're going to have um, all postage detour signage and uh, video message boards. That's to say that we're, we're, we're not driving people in residential neighborhoods. That's, that's a huge uh, concern, obviously, from folks living adjacent to these areas that uh, this could lead to enhanced traffic and um, um, people cutting through um, uh, residential neighborhoods. And that's something that, that we don't want. That's something we know that you don't want. Nobody wants. It becomes not only a, a traffic congestion issue, but it becomes a safety issue. So we want to make sure that um, uh, people uh, stick to the, uh, the detours as best as possible. And that's why they're going to be, you'll, you'll see them as, as signed on arterial major uh, collector roads. <clears throat> and the important thing as well, it uh, may not seem like it on the uh, on the uh, 16th of, of, um, of February when uh, we had a big dump of snow and it's freezing cold outside that uh, um, that I should be talking about uh, uh, cycling and, and pedestrian routes. Uh, uh, but there are uh, avid cyclists like Councillor Cavanaugh, rain, uh, rain or snow. She's out there riding her bike at her others, but certainly people are walking. We want to make sure that uh, um, uh, cycling and pedestrian routes uh, remain open during construction, so that's uh, uh, that's an important consideration as we uh, as we begin to um, uh, implement the closures here. So let me talk about Pinecrest. We're um, uh, I'm going to start at the uh, east and, and go to the west. So um, so as I said off the bat, the, the, the ramps at Pinecrest, a couple of them need to be adjusted to allow the LRT to travel in a in a in a trench underneath the existing ramps and adjacent to the northwest ramp. A precast bridge. Uh, will be built to allow the uh, LRT to travel underneath Pinecrest Road. Now, I've got to uh, 
show you what that means in a minute. Really, what we're doing is, is we've we've got a uh, in in the, in the case of Pinecrest, as I said, we're going underneath Pinecrest Road, so we've we've got to build a structure that uh, that um, the trains can uh, uh, can run through, and uh, so we're actually going to be building a a, um, a bridge on site. And over the course of a weekend or a little bit more in uh, in uh, in the summer, um, that actually gets pushed into place, and uh, um, and then that's uh, uh, that that really supports the work at at Pinecrest. So the the ramp closures that that are uh, are being closed at um, at Pinecrest um, is the the westbound on ramp from Pinecrest northbound. And uh, so again, think of it again when you when I'm uh, heading on Pinecrest northbound and I want to head west. Uh, the ramp that I would use um, normally used to do that heading out to Canada uh, uh, or heading out to that Sens game. Um, it's going to be closed for, eight, for eight months from approximately March uh, 2021 to November 2021. And then um, the westbound off ramp. So think of it again, if I'm coming from the um, coming from the east and, uh, and I want to get off at, um, at uh, Pinecrest. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that from the fall of 21 to the summer of 2023. So that's what uh, the two major and significant ramp closures. These are probably the most impactful ones that we've got of anywhere of the three uh, interchanges, but uh, that's what they're. I'll show you a little bit more what, <clears throat> if everyone can see this photograph. This was photograph was taken on um, Sunday. We had a drone out there taking. So just to align uh, folks here, so you can see the um, um, course of 417 here. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking west. You've got Pinecrest uh, Road here. Uh, this is the ramp here. The, uh, this is the ramp from, uh, um, uh, so it's Pinecrest uh, uh, northbound to 417 westbound. This is the ramp that's going to be closed as of um, uh, as of March for uh, for eight months. This is the off ramp here. It'll be closed in the fall for um, uh, um, till from the fall of 2021 till uh, summer of 2023, approximately 19 months in that uh, that period. And also, what folks are beginning to see, it's uh, we didn't include it here, but ultimately this this ramp here. Um, we, we've got a, we're going to build another, um, uh, a new ramp here, more of a T right here. And, uh, so no, no closures here. Folks will just notice, um, uh, probably in, in, uh, late uh, spring that, uh, if they were coming, uh, coming along here and, uh, wanted to head westbound from, um, uh, it, when they're heading south on Pinecrest and they want to head westbound, there's just the entrance to the ramp will just have been shifted a little bit to, uh, this way. I think it's about 60 or 70 meters that it, that it comes here. <clears throat> I said we're going to build a precast bridge here because the ultimately the the infrastructure of the of the the, the trains and the alignment are going to, be, going to be coming right through here. If you can see here, so we're going to be building a precast bridge over the course of a weekend. We're going to basically shove it on, into its place right underneath here. And uh, and then that allow, allows to, to, to focus on the guideway. So again, impacting this ramp here, impacting this ramp here, um, two significant closures that have to be, um, <coughs> have to take place in order for us to build that infrastructure uh, there. So how are people gonna get around it when ramps are closed? Uh, where, where are the motors uh, going to go? So, um, uh, again, if I'm uh, that first ramp we talked about here, that's the if I'm heading north on um, uh, on um, Pinecrest, and I would normally take this ramp here to go to um, there's my cursor there to go uh, the westbound and uh, uh, out to Canada this way. Um, I can't do that. It's going to be closed, and so be lots of signs telling me where to go um, and telling me that I can't go there. But here's the sign detour that the folks will see. So it's the Pinecrest, it'll go up to um, uh, uh, north to Richmond, and then uh, you'll turn uh, left or west on Richmond, southwest, and you're gonna head um, over in this direction here, and you're gonna enter the 417 um, at the Richmond Road on-ramp. So that um, is the detour that's gonna uh, respond to the closure of the, um, of the ramp. Uh, during that period from March 2020, um, 20, so March, we we'll call it uh, uh, in the next few weeks uh, uh, through to November. <clears throat> the next ramp closure, um, which is the this one uh, down here, so this is the the westbound um, uh, off ramp from the 417. 
And so again, um, how do I how do I get to Pinecrest? If I would normally be coming along here and get off Pinecrest and I either head north or south. Uh, the detour that's, uh, that's uh, proposed and will be implemented is uh, that folks get off at Woodruff. They'll head north on Woodruff to Carling, head uh, west on Carling, south on Pinecrest, and uh, and uh, continue on if that's their if that's their pleasure to come down in this particular area. So both uh, both these uh, ramp closures, as I said, um, uh, uh, are, will be implemented. These are the two two, two detours that'll be um, uh, that'll be implemented uh, for uh, for each of these closures. And as I said, there, you know, that's the where we expect and would would, would want. To, those are the signed detours of the routes that we'd like people to take. Um, and, um, but, uh, uh, we'll monitor the, uh, with, uh, both our traffic team and, <clears throat> and the city's traffic team to see what adjustments need to be made as, as, uh, as we move forward. I'm going to move ahead to Moody now, and we'll take questions at the end if that's, uh, if that's all right for folks. So, um, ad adjustments at Moody, um, again, we have to, um, uh, make adjustments to a couple of ramps. Um, to uh, again to allow the LRT to pass in a trench. So again, it, it's going underneath Moody Drive, um, and uh, and the, again similarly the, the track continues to be constructed um, uh, for the LRT, and it's and it's a it's across Moody Drive on the north side of 417. There's three structures that we have to uh, that we have to build um, uh, for the road bridges, um, and then. Uh, uh, and not only will um, their improvements be made to cycling mobility, um, uh, it'll be maintained during the course of construction there, but these, there are some areas here that uh, overall that uh, mobility and connectivity is going to be enhanced uh, in the longer term. So again, um, uh, we're, we're already moving in that direction. So the West Brown, um, the ramp closure that we're, or, that we're addressing here is the West Brown uh, on-ramp from Moody northbound. It's going to be closed in for nine months. Again, beginning from April of this year till um, uh, towards the end of this year. So, what does that look like? Let, let me orient it, orient to orient, orient, folks. Again, so this is 417 uh, westbound here. I'm looking west. This is Moody Drive here. This is the um, uh, ramp here. This is the um, um, uh, northbound uh, Moody to 417 westbound. This gives you a sense of the uh, work taking place here. This is the maintenance and storage facility here. And here's the um, other um, uh, transitway ramps uh, uh, coming off in this direction as, uh, as well. So this is where we're gonna be, where we're working here. New infrastructure being placed along here, but ultimately we're, we're, um, we're going through there as well. In terms of um, um, uh, the detour, at Moody Drive, so again, um, uh, and we've had some good conversation, and and so it shows how um, we had an original detour uh, that had been proposed, and then had some feedback on it, and uh, uh, the original detour was was showing uh, folks getting off on uh, uh, off at Moody, and then um, and then uh, going to Corkstown and coming along Corkstown and and uh, onto March and back onto the 417. Um, it, it took another look at that uh, with the with between the CAF team and, and the city team and said no, that uh, I think a better route would uh, would be to um, uh, head straight up, head straight up Moody, uh, turn left or west onto Carling, come along Carling and turn again left and southbound on the March. And then uh, hit um, uh, come down here to the interchange at March, and then continue on uh, on uh, uh, westbound uh, along 417. So again, uh, one major uh, one major impact to deal with this ramp because again, if I'm coming northbound here, I will no longer be able to get on that ramp to head west. I have to make an adjustment. So that's the adjustment that's uh, that's being proposed. In terms of um, communications. Um, uh, it's tremendously important. We 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 we've um, working closely with the city. We've been um, uh, putting together, and there's been information about uh, this presentation and and the impacts that, that have been made on made online. So the information is uh, is available online for people to uh, to see. Um, public notices um, uh, be distributed electronically um, uh, via the stage two project newsletter. 
and physically to properties near each interchange. So um, already there was uh, one that uh, an electronic newsletter went out to, today to talk about uh, some of the um, uh, these very these very closures. If folks aren't <coughs> subscribers to the um, uh, Stage Two newsletter. It's one of the things that uh, Damon reminds people constantly to make sure that, uh, that that you sign up for that. That's where that's the easiest and most effective way that we can continue to engage with the community, continue to um, uh, inform folks of uh, of changes that may be not only here but other parts of the project as well. So I encourage you to sign up and and get information as well. Um, we've got um, uh, variable uh, video message display boards. Those are the ones you see up along the highways, and uh, and uh, not only along the highways, but on on a on adjacent to arterial roads. And so, um, the whole program put in place so that uh, uh, people will will get messaging, so uh, they won't be uh, uh, they may be confused the first time when they when they try it if they've missed the the, the portable variable message board but um, after that uh, lots of signage so that to, to tell people where they go and, and so they, they um, uh, can get there safely and efficiently as, as best as possible. Um, closures and detour reminders will be shared on City of Ottawa social media so each week we um, we provide information to the city and they push things out on their on their social media accounts and so and that also appears I know in the in the local papers as well so uh, people will lots of methods by which people be will be aware of these uh, of these closures taking place um, of course feedback is is um, uh, from the local community uh, is uh, uh, welcome at any particular point in time if if um, if uh, detours aren't working as you as you see fit, if you think there's more need for signage and things like that, those are the kind of uh, suggestions that are always going to be helpful to us, and uh, would welcome those. And you just send them to stage two at ottawa.ca. <clears throat> and again, as I said, um, uh, encourage folks to sign up for the uh, stage two uh, project newsletter and um, um, connect and click on connect with us to uh, uh, to subscribe. And that's where uh, we'll continue to update uh, folks as we. Uh, as we move along. Um, so that concludes the formal presentation to folks. And um, uh, Damon, I think at this point in time, we'd open it up to uh, questions and answers from folks. That's right. Thank you, Jamie. That was that was great. Um, and, and thank you for uh, being so uh, clear, concise and informative. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Cavanaugh, I believe you, uh, you are going to be managing the questions on the chat room function. And yep. there's a few that have come through. Uh, yep. I know that uh, Campbell and I have been reviewing those, and I know that he has a uh, some some uh, some comments and and things to say already to that effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, some are in the forms of statements rather than questions, but um, in regards to um, Crystal Beach, um, uh, uh, um, well, uh, Rick, uh, you, you said that will not allow you to get onto the 416 South. Well, you made the comment while they were presenting, so, um, but uh, I think they can pick up where, where that was and where our bus is going when exiting at uh, Pinecrest 417 West. Yeah, that's, that's a good question about the buses. So, Councillor, if you'd like me to, to start by addressing, uh, I guess I'll do the 416 Southbound. Um, yep. First, and that, that's a very perceptive question. We appreciate actually getting that uh, that feedback. When we um, sign detours for you know, the 417 westbound, we're signing it to get from where you would have been to where you were going, i.e. on the 417 westbound. However, it's uh, obviously the case that a uh, big destination for the 417 westbound is the 416 to get southbound to head down towards the 401 or, or Barhaven, whatever have you. And uh, so the detour route that we are signing to get back on the 417 westbound, that takes you up Pinecrest to Richmond, to Holly Acres, onto the on-ramp there. If you were to continue uh, about a, you know, maybe 750 meters or so uh, further along Richmond Road, there is an on-ramp there at the, basically near the intersection of Richmond and Baseline where you would be able to pick up the 416 southbound directly. And so it's effectively on the same detour route. Um, although uh, I, I confess that that's something that we did not uh, catch in our review. And so I appreciate uh, very much getting that question and we can certainly um, enhance our, our signage plans to make sure that we have something that explicitly signs for that. But the detour route does exist and it will uh, function well precisely as I've described. With 
are you are you good on that one, Councillor, or should I go on to the next one? Sure. Um, the the uh, sort of related um, a detour. Well, uh, talking about the detour, especially for trucks going to Toronto. There's concerns about that. Right. So so trucks going to Toronto would would head north on Pinecrest and then west and southwest on Richmond, both of which are arterial arterial roads, uh, truck routes and then would be able to get on that uh, that on ramp that I mentioned that is just beyond Holly Acres in Richmond near the intersection of Richmond and Baseline. So that would be the routes that uh, Toronto bound trucks would take uh, were they originating from the from the Pinecrest area. Now, uh, of course, they also uh, it, it's it's I guess I would say that if you are uh, coming up towards the 417 from further south on Green Bank, there will be uh, variable message signs at the intersection of Green Bank and Baseline that will warn of the fact that that ramp is closed. And so drivers will have an opportunity to turn left onto Baseline at, uh, from Green Bank and then head over to that same on-ramp that, uh, that I noted at uh, the intersection of Richmond and Baseline. Uh, similarly, if it was a westbound truck on Baseline, that would normally turn right to head north on Green Bay to pick up this ramp that would be closed. They will also have a, a variable message sign warning them of that ramp closure, and then they would be able to continue directly on Baseline uh, to pick up that ramp should their destination be to, uh, to the 416 southbound. So the, there are going to be, there's an area wide uh, signing, um, you know, approach that's being used to try to get people to not go towards the closed ramp if we can catch them further upstream and they can make their decisions to you know, find a, another way to their route without using the official sign detour route. But for reasons of clarity for public communication, we, we just sign one official detour route and then use um, that sort of area-wide approach to divert traffic from even getting to have to take the detour route in the first place. And, and that's our approach to that. Right. Um, if people feel they like didn't get the full answer, they could just put in the chat if they, if they want more information. Um, what will the detour be for the OC Transpo buses that normally come off the 417 westbound at Pinecrest to go north um, and go to the bus garage? They will not be just making sure they're not rooted via cannot. They they will not be, and um, it, it's it's a good question. But happily, uh, there will be no detour for OC Transpo. Um, so when that uh, westbound off ramp closes for that extended duration that was noted in, in Jamie's presentation, it will remain open for bus traffic only, um, and so the buses will stay on their same regular route. Uh, so we've preserved that exact uh, routing for them, whether they be destined to the garage or whether they be, you know, regular transitway buses that are continuing west on the transitway. Okay. We have a couple of suggestions for detours of Trim Road or Robert Robertson Road. Have they been considered? So they, they have been. Um, and really the, the best approach from a detour signing perspective is again, to put yourself in the perspective of a motorist who hasn't been diverted by that sort of area wide uh, signage technique that I was discussing previously uh, in the context of Pinecrest. But the same thing goes for Moody, which is to say that if you miss all your signs and you're heading north on Moody and, oh no, my ramp is closed, you wanna sign that driver to continue in the direction they're going. And so the next road they get to would be Carling, and that's therefore why we've signed that particular route. However, one of the reasons why um, this closure of the ramp at Moody is seen to not be particularly impactful um, is because there are so many various routes that one could take to get from Moody over to Eagleson, and sort of depending on what you would be getting on the 417 westbound to do, perhaps you're destined to North Canada. If that's the case, uh, it would make the most sense for you to go up to Carling and take Carling, and that would be your quickest route to Canada North. Whereas perhaps you're uh, headed to 
you know, the south end of Canada, in which case it would make sense to take Robertson Road. And in points in the middle, um, a driver might elect to take Tim Road or Corkstown Road, uh, not the residential section, but the, the Greenbelt section that's between Moody and Eagleson. So there's, there's effectively four parallel roads um, in that general area, all of which would serve uh, any individual transportation demand, depending on what the destination of that particular driver is. But again, we have to sign one detour route so we adopt the strategy of signing it in the direction that traffic approaching the closed ramp would be driving. Thank you. Um, what are the challenges left to address in terms of traffic circulation? It's from Annette. Oh, it's, uh, it's an open-ended question. Uh, yeah. Naturally, we, we, we hope the answer is none. We, we've already found one in terms of uh, improving the signage to, to get traffic uh, explicitly uh, detoured to the 416 southbound. Um, I think the, the reality is that we, you know, we make the best laid plans and we um, have, have looked at it from as many angles as we have. And we remain uh, in, in constant communication, Councillor, with, with your office and with uh, you know, residents in the community who, who are um, always welcome to come to you know, the, the stage two office or, or to East West Connectors with their comments on what they're seeing. And of course, we retain a lot of ability to react to individual problems that, that do come to pass. But uh, like I say, because of the you know, wealth of, of parallel arterial roads that we have in this area. Um, we think that uh, we're likely fairly well prepared. So Campbell, was I right earlier on when I said it usually takes a couple of weeks to uh, for people to adjust? Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. Um, you know, whenever uh, we, we close a, a particular piece of anything um, on the transportation network, the worst day is always the first day. And the second worst day is always the second day. And as you get through the first week of, um, you know, a, a change to the traffic network, new patterns reestablish themselves as drivers become more familiar with, you know, whether the sign due to a route is the best route for them or whether they have another option. And, and so you see that sort of um, redistribution, reestablishment of new patterns to the point where um, you get into to a groove sort of starting in that second week after a change like this is made. And you know, we have plenty of experience doing that in, in various situations across the city and, and we wouldn't expect it to be any different in this case. Thank you. Um, what, what about the uh, on-ramp um, at Bayshore for the 417 West? We haven't talked about Bayshore at all. The on that was, sorry, I think that was the uh, eastbound one that has been descoped. Is that not right, Campbell? Be short. So, so there are the it's on off, actually off of Richmond when you because you're coming up Bay Shore to and it's on Richmond. Yes, and those bring you to the 417 eastbound, not not yeah. west. So they go ahead. They don't factor into the uh, the westbound discussion, but um, insofar as uh, access to the eastbound 417 is concerned, uh, our, our most recent plans are to not affect. Uh, either of the ramps that uh, have access to the 417 eastbound from either direction on Richmond Road. Okay, thank you. Um, from Peter, what about uh, Holly Acre closures? Um, getting between uh, Crystal Beach and Bells Corners is important. Um, um, will Holly Acres be closed? And if so, when and for how long? No. I don't believe it will be. That That's correct, Councillor. There, there will be... Um, perhaps a couple of overnight uh, instances where we need to make short duration, a couple of hours closures of, of Holly Acres in order to erect the girders for the bridge that will go over Holly Acres. But uh, aside from those couple of one-offs, which again would be impacts limited to night shifts, uh, there are, there's no provision in the contract nor indeed any plan to, uh, to have any road closures on Holly Acres. Um, 
So. Yeah, sorry, I didn't. I, I had a, I had a photo. I had a photo I should have shared from Holly Acres, but <clears throat> it really shows you how there's the the impacts are very different there because of your 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 <clears throat> we're going above as opposed to uh, going above Holly Acres as opposed to. Uh, uh, underneath, so it's uh, we're actually building a bridge over that area. So uh, the impacts are different. And as Campbell said, that and, and I said during the presentation, no uh, no long term impacts or ramp closures at uh, at, all, at Holly Acres. Yeah, um, Rick, you made a comment. A lot of trucks from the pits on Moody going west on 417. What's the question you're asking? Um, has that been considered? Is that what you're asking? Um, and why are buses allowed? And the third part, um, what are you going to, to do to make um, it safe for cyclists going north over the 417 bridge on Moody? Right now it's very dangerous and poorly designed. I agree with you fully, Rick. So where would you like to start, Council? Perhaps the, the first <laughs> one with regard to uh, um, trucks coming up from the Moody pits who are destined for 417 westbound. Um, you know, I, I believe most of those uh, quarry origins are sort of down around the fallow field area. And of course, there is a, an on ramp to the 416 northbound from fallow field that those uh, trucks would be able to use. Um, and, you know, should they not do that and, and uh, truck up Moody um, towards the 417, of course, we, we uh, as I explained, will have that sort of area wide. Um, variable message signing. And so they would see as they approach Robertson Road that perhaps it would make sense for them to turn left onto Robertson Road to head over to Eagleson to pick up the 417 westbound or failing that uh, they would take Carling to uh, to the signal at, uh, at March Road and then be able to pick up the 417 westbound from there. So regardless of what option they choose, they would uh, be traveling on arterial roads and truck routes to get to their ultimate destination. Okay. The next and one was why are buses still out on the Pinecrest off-ramp? I believe. Yeah, okay, yes, he said yes. Uh, so uh, effectively that one is um, the, the construction uh, that needs to occur there. And, and um, hopefully I don't butcher the explanation and Jamie step in if I do, but um, th there's quite an extensive amount of construction that does need to occur both with regard to utility relocations and the construction of the ultimate grade separation. And that is extremely constraining for space that results in the off-ramp, uh, the only space that we can keep available um, is substandard for general traffic um, for an off-ramp from uh, the Ministry of Transportation's perspective. However, it does remain an absolutely critical link for our transit network. And therefore, what we have done is uh, work with OC Transpo, EWC and the MTO to come up with the geometric alignment in that very constrained area that will be you know, safe and, and good for use by buses, but that we don't have the same level of comfort with um, opening up to, to general traffic because a driver would encounter sort of a, a, curve, a curve radius that you wouldn't normally anticipate. It would be an unusual situation. And moreover, it uh, will be constricted in terms of capacity and lanes. I think we all know that that off-ramp widens out um, as it leaves the highway and there's a, an extra lane and then it develops into more lanes at the intersection. And because we're not going to be able to keep all of that capacity there, and additionally that, that geometric constraint that I, I mentioned, um, it's really only suitable for professional drivers in a controlled setting with the lower volume that's, I mean, I know there's lots of buses, but when you're limiting it to just buses, you've really brought that volume of traffic down and um, don't have to worry about the buses getting um, delayed by large volumes of general traffic and vice versa. So effectively, um, given all of those constraints and the need to keep the bus system operating as an absolutely critical piece, that was the, um, the way we were able to, to keep the, the ramp open, at least for OC Transpo. Okay. And uh, cyclists. On Moody, correct? Correct, yes. 
So um, on Moody, we have now um, constructed a pedestrian facility on the west side of the Moody Bridge. And so, you know, prior to construction happening, uh, there was nothing for pedestrians. And I think there was a painted uh, bike lane for cyclists. And so we've now um, been able to allocate space on the west side of the bridge through this construction uh, for, um, for, for pedestrians, which was our, our primary aim. They're sort of at the top tier of our, our concern. And as construction um, continues to progress, you know, when we're all done, we're going to have a, I believe it's a multi-use pathway. Um, and of course, Damon or, or Jamie, correct me if I'm mistaken, but we're ending up with a, a, a three meter wide multi-use pathway facility on the west side of Moody when all is said and done. Uh, and so while we're not necessarily able to improve things for cyclists in the interim condition, we certainly have made a, a very strong effort to do so for pedestrians. And we have incorporated uh, improvements to cycling safety as part of the ultimate design for for the Moody Bridge once it's done. Yeah, it, it's it's much better. But there's nothing on the east side, correct? That is correct. That, okay, um, it, uh, it, it's not great when pedestrians and and uh, cyclists have to share space, um, but. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, it's well. I mean, it's better than what we have. That's for sure. But um, uh, and I know it's took a lot of negotiations with MTO just to get that. So anyway, um, on to the other question here is the impact of pedestrians using the Pinecrest overpass. Will they be rerouted to a different sidewalk at any point? I would say no, there's no plans for pedestrians to be, uh, you know, for either side of the Pinecrest bridge to be closed for long durations of time. There may be particular pieces of work where we do um, just tying in the new construction to the existing roadway where we for a few days you know I I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the, the contractor because we don't necessarily have the details down to that level yet but there are there's no construction that I'm aware of that um, would require any long duration uh, closure of either sidewalk on Pinecrest and that, that's probably the best answer I can give right now without uh, misspeaking. Okay. Um, it'd be good if we have a, yeah, make sure we have clear information for pedestrians. Uh, it's not the greatest place to walk, that's for sure. But um, some people have to do it and um, it's the only connection. We'll certainly be looking forward to that pedestrian bridge that's coming across that's gonna um, go from the Ikea to the Queensview station. So keep in mind that is in the plans. So. Uh, so uh, that's the long term, because that bridge is not fun. Um, okay, um, were truckers consulted? Well, I guess so. Yes. Yeah. Um, we uh, we try not to operate in a bubble, and we sent out uh, uh, our information to the freight and um, and truck sector, and okay, great. we keep them in the loop when it comes to whether it is a school bus or a truck or anything. We, we are always ensuring that they're aware of our works and they're not surprised when they come upon a closure or whatnot. Okay, great. And, and Damon, Damon, you guys also uh, did, made sure you did uh, connected with all the, the big employers uh, on the um, around Ikea in that, that area, right? That, that's that's right. part of the that, plan as well? Yeah, that's a very good point. And those emails <laughs> went out this week. Um, so, uh, uh, advising all the major businesses and along the impacted interchanges, uh, offering opportunities to have a fulsome conversations with, uh, with staff as well. Thank you. Um, is there any impact on the bike path between Holly Acres and Moody? I think the simple answer is no. Um, yeah. This is uh, the the NCC trail that runs to the north of yeah. Howard uh, No, there, there's no plans to have our construction impact that whatsoever. Yeah, in fact, I just got uh, groomed for skiing for the first time uh, just this weekend. So hope you enjoy it. Um, Peter's asking, signage on the 417 overpass going north on Moody. There is a lane reduction uh, that is not signed. There is a large arrow, but no indication of the reduction. We have seen 
northbound cars end up in the oncoming lanes as they miss the lane reduction. Um, so any comments on that? Saying this is uh, confusing and dangerous. I, I, I would tend to agree. I mean, I, I there is a lane reduction on Moody right now. And of course we do have, um, you know, the normal temporary condition signage in place, including that large arrow board that that was noted. Um, there should be uh, included in that, you know, your standard uh, lane ends type of signage. I think we all know what that looks like. So <laughs> I won't uh, try to describe it. Um, but uh, if, if uh, that sign is, has gone missing or um, you know, perhaps it's uh, been upended into the snowbank or something like that. We'll have that review to make sure that that signage is in place because uh, I can certainly understand okay. the concern. Oh, um, somebody had their hand up and uh, wasn't able to. Malcolm, did you want to speak? I'll let you speak. You couldn't use the chat there. You have to take yourself off mute, Malcolm. You're still on mute. Right. Oh, no. thank you. There you go. Uh, I've noticed that all three interchanges, because we have uh, a potential change in mode of transport, people coming from the south, northwest, and east, and all three uh, interchanges with the LRT, uh, I don't see any reference to parking for either uh, motor vehicles or bicycles. Uh, I know bicycles are being accepted on trains, and that seems to be working. Uh, and at Eagleson, we have a park and ride arrangement, uh, but other cities that I've lived in uh, where um, cars intersect with an LRT arrangement, uh, there is a real demand for parking. Uh, living fairly close to it, I don't want people trying to park on the street <laughs> where I live because we're all in 20 foot wide townhouses and there's no room for parking. Uh, so what, what arrangements are made for parking for people coming from Manatick and, and uh, uh, Kentville uh, that want to uh, link up, move, move into the, the core of the city uh, from one of these stations? Okay, that's, that's a very good question, Malcolm. And, and I just want to point out, so we're not talking, this, this presentation is not about the end state, but I'll happily address this, Malcolm, please, not a problem. Um, we're not actually building any uh, park and rides within the green belt. Um, that is a policy. Uh, sorry, you're on mute again, Malcolm. I'm sorry. It's not a bad thing. Malcolm, I, I, I just, I don't know what you're saying, but. I... Yeah, Connie, can you unmute Malcolm, please? Not too happy, Damon, I think that's a. Uh... Uh, may, maybe I'll just speak then. Um, so we, we aren't building any new ones. Uh, we right. looked at building a new one at Moody. Uh, there wasn't uh, available space required. So Eagleson is the park and ride coming from the west. Um, there is park and rides being built at the south end of our project down, uh, down around Leitrim and well, Louisville area. Uh, I'm but, an but early morning more. walker along the riverfront. Yeah. Uh, and uh, wonderful this year now that we have the multi-use pathway along the river uh, being groomed. Lo and behold, uh, the uh, commuter traffic is now parking in those parking lots along the river. Uh, oh, goodness. Um, I, uh, I've been working with, with Councillor Kavanaugh's office, actually. Uh, I know that there was some uh, uh, yeah. um, blocking, uh, no parking signs as well, but there was a real interest in, in people uh, uh, taking advantage of the outdoor and amenities. That's right. And yeah. so uh, um, we do believe, okay. we do believe Malcolm, yes. that those are people enjoying the amenities. There's just more of yeah. them on the outside the trails. The commuters than also want to get to work. Yeah. I guess so. Okay, yeah. I don't know if too many commuters right now, but you make a good point, Malcolm. I'm Thank only you. 79. I've been retired for 20 years. And this is just the observation of one of these uh, aging teenagers. <laughs> Very good, sir. Thank you. Th thank you, Malcolm. Thank you. Um, so just going to see if there's any other questions to finish up because we're just about done. Um, when is the detour on the Moody Bridge being removed? It's from Rick. Jamie, do you have that uh, 
information with you or, or perhaps I'll, I'll ask for a clarification the detour on the moody bridge that being the uh the current deviation in the lanes um it, okay i see brick yeah. nodding and so um i believe the way that goes is we are going to have uh right right now the the lanes are deviated to the west side of the bridge and right. um so once we finish building what we need to build with the west side of the bridge holding the traffic and the east side of the bridge having the construction, which is what's uh, associated with the closure of that westbound on-ramp coming from the south, we will then uh, have to build the other side of that bridge. And so we'll do a similar thing on the east side, I think in the next construction season in 2022. Following the end of the 2022 construction season, uh, that is when the road will be complete, the infrastructure underneath will be complete, and therefore we'll have a nice straight road alignment with uh, four lanes and that new multi-use pathway on the west side of the bridge all ready to go. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Hey, um, the other question from Rick is, um, did you listen to what truckers actually said? Um, We, we, sent that email, we sent that email out uh, today's Wednesday, yesterday. Uh, we haven't heard back, but thank you. Okay, um, we do have a hand up from, from somebody, um, uh, Lucas, um, and I think that's probably gonna be the final question. Well, maybe one more. Lucas? Yes, um, I just want a clarification that, uh, is this going to be posted somewhere for viewing? Because I I came late by uh, my my apologies, but I just want to if I miss something in the conversation because there's a lot of con a lot of uh, context. So I was just wondering if there's going to be posted somewhere for residents to see in the future. Yes, yes, Lucas, um, we're we're recording it, so okay. um, and, and and it'll be on the on the my my uh, website and in the newsletter Bay Ward Bulletin. Which I think you get. So yes, um, yeah. So yes. yeah. So uh, you'll be able to get the information there, and uh, we'll make sure people know about that for those that miss the meeting because there's conflicts and uh, lots of meetings going on. Okay, you, Lucas. I also wanted to say that we also have um, this presentation, uh, but I, I did pare it down for for this purpose. Um, so a lot, a little more information, knowing that people wouldn't be speaking to the information. That's on our our stage two website at Ottawa.ca. Now you can find some more information mm -hmm. there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's a comment about if there's any impact on walkers for schools. Hmm. I'm not sure. I. I think the simple think answer is no, the... counselor. I'm sorry. Sorry to jump in. Yeah. No. No. You would know, uh, Campbell. You would. You know the traffic patterns. So I know the schools. <laughs> Well, and you, you certainly do the schools better than me, and uh, I, I'm not aware of um, you know that many schools whose catchments uh, you know really expand across the, the 417. But uh, given that we're not closing any of the sidewalks on Pinecrest, and we've now added the facility to the west side of the Moody Bridge, and there's no impacts on Richmond Road. Um, of everything we've talked about today, um, there will be no impact from that on anybody walking to school. Yeah, I think actually the only thing is um, Woodruff is may be getting more traffic, but there are lights and crossing guards for Woodruff. So it shouldn't be any different uh, because it's already, uh, it has the measures, me measurements it has for D. Roy Kennedy probably is the one that I would think or people going to Woodruff High School. Um, uh, so when you move the construction to the west, how can people access the new sidewalk? I'm not. Which sidewalk are you? Which sidewalk are we talking about? Here? We're talking about Moody, um, and so okay, I, I was speaking about how we will move the the construction uh, to the west side. Okay, got it. And, and right. so the the simple answer is um, that we will be able to maintain that pedestrian pathway 
while we're doing the construction there. Um, I, I forget the precise detail as to whether it can stay exactly where it is or whether we move it over um, to sort of mirror the road as that occurs. Probably the latter is thinking logically, um, but no, we, we definitely uh, made sure that that, we, we didn't provide a pedestrian facility just to have to take it away at a future stage of construction. Uh, that will be there throughout all stages of construction. So, so, Cam so Campbell, this, this question's come up a couple of times. Why don't we look at, um, we can uh, prepare a drawing of sorts and get that on the website so that people can understand what that conductivity and, and the pedestrian impacts are and how they're going to ma be maintained during construction at, uh, at Moody. I, I think that's an excellent idea. It would, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and I'm a man of many yeah. words and a few pictures. Yeah. yeah. And, and just to wrap up all the, the questions about school, uh, were the principals advised in the area? or the school boards. Actually, it's usually done through the school boards, Annette. Um, so we, uh, we included the schools that were directly uh, impacted, like right at the interchange. Uh, on our next send, we have our school boards that are also receiving this information. But truly, it is more important that we're talking with the school bus, if, if I'm um, to understand it properly, for if you're crossing a highway, you're likely on a school bus. Yeah, I think they're also to, she's they're also referring to the detours that there may be more traffic because uh, Richmond was mentioned. So, um, so I think it's um, it, it's yeah, it, a lot of these kids are are bus, but the ones that are walkers, it, it's good to know. Um, so so sorry, I'm going to. Counselor. Um, so just uh, may, may just pose some Campbell. So, so if we if we think of the um, so maybe what some people are picking up on is is some concerns of call it uh, tra more traffic in the neighborhoods right so if 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 people are heading northbound on on Woodruff for example and and uh, so you're the city doesn't just monitor traffic patterns and where cars are going and making adjustments on that basis it also uh, through um, uh, the police services is monitoring enforcement as well right to make sure that make sure that uh, if if you know people are coming um, uh, are getting delayed because of um, uh, unfamiliarity with ramps and things like that um, then they all of a sudden start traveling faster to get the to, to get to where they want to be and they're going down some detour those are those are issues that the city takes very seriously and, and monitors very carefully right to make sure that there's no in, mo, no more speeding and stuff like that to, to, as people are are trying to keep their schedules oh without a doubt jamie that's uh absolutely one of our our priorities and indeed why we make such an effort to you know direct traffic to to stay on the arterial roads and that's where our our detours go um yeah. Traffic uh, tends not to uh, speed more on arterial roads when they become more congested. That that's certainly the case, and we do everything we can to keep that that traffic out of um, the residential neighborhoods. And in, when when you look at the, um, the 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 general map of the area, there there's very precious little incentive or little time to be gained, if any. Um, in fact, time lost by by cutting through the uh, the residential neighborhoods, especially right now with traffic volumes kind of depressed uh, the way they are. There's no reason why traffic would uh, want to go off of those those better roads for conveying traffic, those arterials. Um, but but of course, you know, we keep our ear very close to the ground, and that's uh, working with with Damon and yourself, Jamie and Rosanna. Uh, through the councillor to, to make sure that when we do hear of, of complaints associated with changes in traffic in, in, in everyone's neighbourhood, uh, we're able to address that as quickly and expediently as possible. Great. Um, another cycling question. Um, cyclists are going to continue to use Moody Bridge on the road. Um, how will you ensure their safety? I, 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 I do want to say we're kind of veering off the purpose of this meeting, which was yes. about the impacts yeah. to the interchanges. And if Ann Campbell wants to answer this, but I will say that anyone who uses a road does so at their own responsibility and at their own risk. And I'm not saying that unsafe, yeah. perceived or unperceived are okay, uh, but the condition as I understand it is not great, but better yeah. than before and will get better. 
and I also understand personally, if I'm not comfortable on a road, I don't drive it. I don't walk it. I don't bike. Personally, I do. So I'm not a problem, yeah. but I know other people. Yeah. And that, that's just something I want to say. Thank you. Okay. I think we're finished up now because uh, we've run out of time. We're actually way past. So, um, and I have actually to go to another meeting myself. But um, thanks, thank you everyone. Um, I think we've covered all the subjects related to the closures. Um, thank you to all the teams here, to, um, to Jamie and Damon and Rosanna and Campbell and, and everyone. Um, it's, uh, it's been very informative. Um, this is available, we will put it out and uh, we'll use the presentation as well so that that information is, is available too. And thank you very much for taking the time to come out. And um, we, we can still take questions if, um, if there's something you think of later, okay? And please feel free to focus those questions through the stage two inbox and we're happy to, uh, to yes. take those and address those. Yes, thank I you. think I'll, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Enjoy the snow. Okay.